What's nice about Bruce Lee, he was always kind of a, a virgin. He was Bruce Lee and Bolo Young are two legendary martial artists who have left an indelible mark on the world of martial arts. Bruce Lee is widely considered to be the father of modern martial arts, while Bolo Young is renowned for his impressive physique and powerful performances in various action films. Their paths crossed in Enter the Dragon, leading to a strong friendship between them until Bruce's mysterious death. Although Young doesn't take a liking to media attention, Bolo Young recently appeared in an interview and profoundly talked about his friend Bruce Lee. Let's take a look at what Young has to say about the Little Phoenix. If you're a fan of old-timey action and martial arts flicks, then there's a pretty good chance that the name Bolo Young will ring a bell. Bolo Young stands as one of the most iconic martial actors of all time. With his incredibly toned physique, Bolo was more than just an imposing figure back in his heyday. Trust me, this man was a certified tank, and his physique made him a perfect fit for several classic martial arts flicks. Born on July 3, 1946, in Guangzhou, China, Bolo's upbringing was far from glamorous. Growing up as a lower-class kid, he was no stranger to the challenges of life in Hollywood. Raised in a country still grappling with its own identity, Bolo found solace and purpose in martial arts. At the young age of 10, Bolo embarked on his martial arts journey, training under several renowned kung fu masters. During this era, martial arts held a significance beyond just self-defense or fitness. They were deeply ingrained in Chinese society as a way of life. For Bolo, martial arts provided not only physical training, but also invaluable lessons in focus and discipline. Driven by a desire for self-improvement and seeking stability amidst societal turbulence, Bolo delved even deeper into his practice. He mastered the ancient art of Tai Chi, renowned for its ability to enhance focus and meditation. Still, Bolo's time in China wasn't destined to be lengthy. At that juncture of his life, China was a tumultuous place to be. The nation grappled with significant political and social upheaval, marked by the ascent of communism, widespread protests, and human rights violations. Seeking a brighter future, Bolo made the bold decision to depart for the region of China, closest to the Hong Kong border. To reach the island nation, he embarked on a daring journey, swimming through the Shenzhen River. Unlike mainland China, Hong Kong boasted a relatively liberal society. As a British colony at the time, it held a distinct identity from the mainland. Hong Kong stood as a vibrant melting pot, teeming with individuals from diverse cultures and backgrounds, where Bolo found himself fitting in quite comfortably. Interestingly, it was during this period that Bolo developed a keen interest in fitness and bodybuilding. He firmly believed that a strong, well-toned physique complemented martial arts prowess, and he took this philosophy to heart. In 1969, Bolo clinched the title of Mr. Hong Kong Bodybuilding Champion, a prestigious accolade he held for an impressive decade. Despite his remarkable achievements, Bolo remained humble, emphasizing that his pursuits were not driven by personal glory. For him, martial arts served as a pathway to spiritual harmony. Through the practice of Tai Chi, Bolo found a means to align his physical and spiritual dimensions, achieving true personal balance during this transformative period. Hong Kong boasted a burgeoning bodybuilding scene, providing fertile ground for Bolo to thrive and excel. His dedication paid off handsomely as he soon flourished. Bolo's rise to fame didn't go unnoticed for long. Soon, his popularity spread far and wide across the land. As expected, this newfound fame paved the way for his entry into the world of cinema and filmmaking. In tandem with the burgeoning popularity of its culture, Hong Kong had emerged as a hub of creativity and talent in filmmaking. With studios like Shaw Brothers and Golden Harvest at the forefront, the country's film industry thrived, churning out classic action and martial arts movies, much like the contemporary global phenomenon of K-pop, these Hong Kong films transcended their domestic borders, captivating audiences worldwide. In an era marked by a burgeoning film industry, 
Producers and directors were constantly in search of fresh talents, capable of infusing projects with a unique blend of physicality and acting prowess. Bolo Young, the actor whose impressive physique and martial arts background positioned him as the ideal candidate for the movies of this era. Given Bolo's credentials, it came as no surprise that he seamlessly integrated into the dynamic world of Hong Kong cinema, leaving an indelible mark on the industry. In the late 60s, studio executives recognized Bolo's potential and began offering him roles, albeit small ones, to play in their films. While these initial roles may have seemed minor, they laid the foundation for what would become Bolo's remarkable career trajectory. Bolo's commanding physique and enigmatic demeanor lent him an intimidating presence on screen. His stoic look often made him the perfect fit for villainous roles, characters who didn't need to say much to convey their menacing aura. When it was time for action, everyone knew Bolo meant business. Despite making strides in the acting world, Bolo faced numerous challenges. The film industry during this period was fiercely competitive, requiring individuals to demonstrate unwavering perseverance and establish themselves as formidable talents to truly succeed. Adding to Bolo's challenges, he faced a significant language barrier upon his arrival in Hong Kong. Being Chinese, he had to navigate not only linguistic differences, but also cultural nuances in his new environment. However, Drawing from his early experiences in martial arts and bodybuilding, Bolo embraced the values of hard work and perseverance, which became guiding principles in his journey. Bolo's breakthrough came when he captured the attention of executives at Shaw Brothers Studios, one of Hong Kong's most prestigious filmmaking houses. Renowned for classics like Dolomite and The Five Deadly Venoms, Shaw Brothers understood the importance of compelling villains in great movies. In Bolo, they saw the perfect embodiment of such a character. Stoic, disciplined, and resolute. Bolo's journey with Shaw Brothers marked a significant turning point in his career. He landed roles in several of their productions, ranging from heroic tales to intense dramas like Deadly Duo and Angry Guest. With each film, Bolo solidified his status as a martial arts icon and a commanding presence on screen. His portrayal of villains became legendary, blending physical prowess with psychological depth. Bolo's characters exuded strength and subtlety, evoking both fear and respect among audiences. What set him apart was his ability to transcend the stereotypical image of a muscular villain. Bolo infused his roles with layers of complexity, transforming seemingly one-dimensional characters into multifaceted individuals. Audiences were captivated by Bolo's portrayal of villains who, despite their antagonistic roles, elicited empathy and understanding. Through his physicality and nuanced performances, Bolo conveyed a range of emotions, allowing viewers to connect with his characters on a deeper level. In an industry saturated with stereotypical villains, Bolo managed to carve out a distinct niche for himself. His characters were not mere obstacles for the heroes to overcome. They were integral to the storylines, often driving the plots forward and adding layers of complexity to the films. What set Bolo apart was his ability to infuse his roles with a unique persona and charisma, making his characters incredibly compelling. Instead of adhering to stereotypes, Bolo brought depth and nuance to his performances, captivating audiences with his on-screen presence. Moreover, Bolo's imposing physique further enhanced his reputation in the film industry. His muscular build not only added authenticity to his action sequences, but also contributed to his overall appeal as a martial arts star. Working with Shaw Brothers provided Bolo with invaluable opportunities to collaborate with some of Hong Kong's most esteemed talents, including directors, choreographers, and fellow actors. This exposure to excellence allowed him to hone his craft and refine his acting skills, constantly pushing himself to deliver standout performances, navigating through different directors' styles and adapting to various shooting techniques at Theory Point, 
Bolo's time with Shaw Brothers proved instrumental in shaping his legacy and influence in martial arts cinema. He emerged as a role model for aspiring actors and a blueprint for writers seeking to create compelling antagonists. Bolo's contribution to the martial arts movie genre was undeniable, with each iconic character he portrayed adding to its growth in various ways. With Hong Kong emerging as a hub for martial arts and movie talent, collaboration became inevitable. As the talent pool in Hong Kong's film industry swelled, there was increasing demand for actors who could bring fresh perspectives to different storylines. This demand coincided with Bolo's rising popularity in the industry. During this period, another figure was making waves in the industry, Bruce Lee. Like Bolo, Bruce hailed from Chinese descent, but his upbringing differed significantly. Born in the United States, Bruce automatically gained American citizenship. However, at the age of just four months, Bruce and his parents relocated to Hong Kong. It was here that Bruce was first exposed to the world of cinema, thanks to his father, who was an opera star. Remarkably, before even reaching the age of 10, Bruce had already begun his acting career. Despite his early success in Hong Kong, Bruce's family made the decision to send him back to the United States during his teenage years. In April of 1959, Bruce settled in Seattle, where he pursued his education while also working as a live-in waiter at a local restaurant. During this time, Bruce also delved deeper into martial arts, developing his own unique approach to disciplines like Wing Chun and Kung Fu. He established his first martial arts school in Seattle, marking the beginning of his journey to become a martial arts legend. By 1961, Bruce had enrolled at the University of Washington, where he pursued studies in various fields, including arts, philosophy, and psychology. Before long, Bruce also found success in acting, landing roles in notable productions such as The Green Hornet, Batman, and Ironside. With each role, Bruce further solidified his reputation as a talented actor. However, amidst his rising fame, Bruce also felt a pull to return to his roots and contribute to the burgeoning film scene in his homeland of Hong Kong. It was in this vibrant atmosphere that Bruce Lee and Bolo Jung's paths finally crossed. Their initial meeting took place on the set of a local commercial for Winston cigarettes. From the moment they encountered each other, Bruce and Bolo hit it off, forming a bond that would grow stronger over time. Eventually, Bruce extended an invitation to Bolo to join him in Enter the Dragon, a role that would have a profound impact on both of their careers. In order to accomplish this task, the martial artist had to journey to a remote island and engage in a grueling tournament. Enter the Dragon proved to be a success in many aspects. The film not only elevated the martial arts genre with its artistry and choreography, but also achieved commercial success, grossing over $400 million to date, despite having a budget of approximately $850,000. That's quite a remarkable return on investment. Interestingly, it was during Enter the Dragon that Bolo acquired his nickname. Portraying the character named Bolo in the movie, the moniker stuck with him thereafter. Jung Z officially became known as Bolo Jung. During their collaboration on Enter the Dragon, Bolo and Bruce forged a strong bond. They collaborated closely on fight techniques, exchanging knowledge and learning from each other about effective approaches to choreography and other aspects of filmmaking. In Enter the Dragon, Jung portrayed the role of the villain's sidekick, while Lee commanded the lead protagonist position. Although Jung typically shies away from media attention, he recently broke his silence in an interview, offering profound insights into his friendship with Bruce Lee. Let's delve into what Jung had to say about The Little Phoenix. In November 2022, the Chinese bodybuilder finally opened up about Bruce Lee in a Mandarin interview, later translated into English by Beardy Bruce Lee Central. During the conversation, Jung revealed fascinating details about Lee's persona and shared intriguing anecdotes from the sets of Enter the Dragon. He recounted how Bruce Lee was frequently challenged on set, stating, Bruce didn't want to fight, but he felt he was forced to. 
Young further elaborated that an extra wanted to test Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do skills, leading to a brief altercation. Acknowledging Lee's lightning-fast reflexes, Jung remarked, he kicked the extra in the head and the fight was over. Bruce was too fast. Clearly impressed by Lee's martial prowess, Jung expressed admiration for his remarkable speed, emphasizing, his speed was incredible. Bruce was renowned for his lightning-fast speed, capable of delivering eight punches in a single second. Among his famous techniques was the one-inch punch, a devastating move he mastered. In this move, Bruce would stand extremely close to his opponent and deliver a punch so powerful that its impact reverberated throughout the recipient's body. The physics behind this punch have intrigued experts, with Bruce's version clocking in at an astounding 118 e or 190 km h. The force behind it could send a 200 lebi or 90 kg person flying back 16 RT or 5 meter. Bruce's extraordinary speed and power were the result of his rigorous training regimen, focusing on enhancing his speed, strength, and endurance. What if there was a hypothetical matchup between Bruce Lee and Bolo Jung, who would win? Both Lee and Jung were renowned for their exceptional physical prowess and their expertise in various martial arts disciplines. Lee was deeply rooted in Wing Chun, a martial art he honed to perfection before crafting his own unique style known as Jeet Kune Do. Beyond martial arts, Lee dazzled audiences with his dancing skills and remarkable acrobatic feats. On the flip side, Jung's repertoire encompassed a blend of karate and kung fu, showcasing his remarkable strength and agility. Bruce Lee's Wing Chun approach prioritized speed, precision, and efficiency in movement. He believed in tailoring martial arts techniques to suit individual strengths and weaknesses, rejecting a one-size-fits-all approach to combat. Conversely, Bolo Young's training emphasized raw power and stamina, focusing on delivering devastating blows capable of swiftly neutralizing opponents. In a hypothetical matchup between Bruce Lee and Bolo Young, Lee would likely rely on his agility and quick reflexes to evade Young's formidable strikes. Utilizing his Wing Chun expertise, Lee would aim to exploit openings in Young's defense, targeting vulnerable areas like the eyes, nose, and throat with rapid pinpoint strikes. Lee's legendary one-inch punch would serve as a lethal tool, packing tremendous force over a short distance. However, Bolo Young's sheer power and endurance would pose significant challenges for Bruce Lee. A solid blow from Jung could potentially incapacitate or knock out Lee, given Jung's unparalleled strength. Moreover, Jung's robust martial arts background and rigorous bodybuilding regimen would render him remarkably resilient, capable of enduring substantial punishment and pressing on despite sustaining injuries. In their cinematic endeavors, Bruce Lee blazed a trail in the martial arts film genre, starring in iconic works like The Way of the Dragon and Fist of Fury. Renowned for his charismatic on-screen presence and ability to execute his own stunts, Lee transcended mere acting to become a philosophical voice in the martial arts community. On the contrary, Jung carved a niche for himself as a notorious antagonist in films. His collaboration with Lee spanned movies like Enter the Dragon and Game of Death, where Young's ominous physicality and on-screen menace solidified his status as a go-to choice for villainous roles. Renowned for his extraordinary displays of strength, such as breaking bricks and bending steel bars, Jung's imposing presence left an indelible mark on the martial arts film landscape. In a hypothetical showdown between Bruce Lee and Bolo Jung, predicting the outcome proves challenging. Lee's speed and agility would pose a formidable challenge for Bolo Jung, given his Jeet Kune Do style's emphasis on adaptability and counterattacks. Yet, Bolo Jung's power and precise technique could make him a formidable adversary. His ability to deliver devastating strikes with accuracy might provide an advantage against Lee's renowned quick movements. Physically, Bolo Jung emerges as the more imposing figure. Standing at 5'7", 
and weighing around 220 pounds, boasting a muscular build envied by bodybuilders. In contrast, Bruce Lee, at 5'7 and approximately 135 pounds, possessed a lean and wiry physique that facilitated his swift and efficient movements. Ultimately, predicting the outcome of a confrontation between Bruce Lee and Bolo Young remains impossible. Both martial artists possessed extraordinary talent and skills, each with their unique strengths and weaknesses. While Lee's speed and precision made him a formidable adversary, Jung's power and endurance made him equally formidable. The victor would likely be determined by who could capitalize on their strengths and exploit their opponent's weaknesses. Following Bruce's tragic passing in 1973, Bolo famously remarked, There will never be another Bruce Lee. I am privileged to have had the honor of calling him my friend. His sentiment proved true, as many attempted to emulate Bruce's legendary one-inch punch, but none could quite match the original. Indeed, it seems unlikely that anyone will ever replicate Bruce Lee's unique talents. The friendship between these two legends began to blossom in 1971, during the filming of a cigarette commercial. After a year of their spontaneous encounter, Lee approached Jung with an offer to collaborate on his upcoming movie. Intriguingly, Jung enthusiastically accepted Lee's proposal and agreed to share the screen with him. Thus, Lee and Bolo found themselves cast as the lead actors in Enter the Dragon. Their relationship was founded on mutual admiration and respect, with both men pioneering the promotion of martial arts. Their bond was that of kindred spirits, pushing each other to excel in their artistic and professional endeavors. Together, they collaborated on what remains one of the most iconic martial arts films of all time. Bolo's journey to stardom took a poignant turn with Bruce Lee's untimely demise. The loss hit Bolo hard, for Bruce wasn't just a comrade but a source of inspiration, propelling him to greater heights in the realm of martial arts. However, amidst the sorrow, a new chapter unfolded for Bolo. The success of Enter the Dragon catapulted him into the realm of Hollywood acclaim, fulfilling the coveted dream of many actors. His collaboration with Bruce and his remarkable talents in both acting and martial arts opened doors to fresh opportunities in his cinematic career. Venturing into Hollywood showcased Bolo's versatility as an actor, introducing a distinct fusion of Eastern and Western martial arts styles to the silver screen. His pivotal role in Blood Sport, a 1988 martial arts masterpiece, marked a pinnacle in his career. With a modest budget of $1.5 million, the film starred the charismatic Jean-Claude Van Damme as Frank Lux, alongside Bolo as Chong Li, the fearsome and indomitable champion of the clandestine martial arts circuit. Once again, Bolo found himself in his element, portraying a villain with finesse while showcasing his remarkable combat skills, chiseled physique, and acting prowess. As Chong Li, he exuded both charm and menace, crafting a character that posed a formidable challenge to the movie's protagonist, earning Bolo newfound acclaim and adulation from audiences. Similar to his experience with Enter the Dragon, Bolo struck a camaraderie with Van Damme during the filming of Bloodsport. Their mutual respect for each other's abilities blossomed into a deep friendship, prompting Van Damme to extend an invitation for Bolo to join him in his next venture, Double Impact. Bolo's journey continued with numerous projects, becoming a source of inspiration for aspiring martial artists seeking to emulate his success. Despite his retirement today, his influence remains palpable in the martial arts realm, with many of today's luminaries acknowledging him as a pivotal figure. In conclusion, while he may not have held the title of the most prominent martial arts actor of his era, Bolo Jung undeniably left an indelible mark. Through collaborations with industry stalwarts like Bruce Lee, he carved out his place as one of the most revered martial artists of all time. And that's wrap-up for this video. What do you think about Lee and Bolo's on-screen dynamics? Give us your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe it to show your support. Thanks for joining us. 
I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.